Hey folks, it's old Texas Paul. I want to invite you to the inaugural edition of Coffee with Texas Paul, my Sunday morning news and commentary show. I'd like to dedicate this show to young master Owen. This one's to you, buddy. Hmm. Boy, I hope you folks' coffee is as good as mine. So let's get into it. Folks, we have got a million ton radical, out of control Republican Supreme Court freight train bearing down on us right now as we speak. And we're strapped to the tracks. If Roe wasn't bad enough, Dobbs wasn't bad enough. The Tlefsky case is going to alter our country as we know it. Let me, uh, let me give you a little background on what we're talking about and why this is so devastating and why this will permanently change our country as we know it. As so many of our elder loved ones do, Yorkie Tlefsky developed severe dementia. Uh, as a resident of Indiana, he availed himself of Medicaid, and he and his wife got him into a care facility. That uh, care facility was run by a corporation called the Health and Hospital Corporation of Marion County, Indiana. That corporation is owned by the state of Indiana. So, brief highlights, Mr. Tlefsky, like so many people suffering, suffering from dementia, became violent, and um, there were some allegations of sexual misconduct. And the facility uh, sedated him and kept him sedated, which is not an uncommon practice. It is horrible to see a loved one go through that. And it is, in my opinion, not right. But it is the easiest way for these facilities to control people in the late stages of dementia. Um, and if you're unaware in, in these tragic cases, um, people become very afraid, very disoriented, scared, violent. Um, they could have been the kindest, sweetest, gentlest person you have ever known in your life. And under the ravages of this degrading, degrading disease, they become a person that you often can't recognize. And it is usually impossible for a spouse, especially a wife, to handle the situation. And these people end up in care facilities. What people don't realize is that Medicaid is the life saving program. It's the life it is it is it is the the Very, very cornerstone of what allows people to remain somewhat independent, somewhat on their own. It, it allows people, children of folks afflicted with this, to continue to work and care for their family because they know that their parents and grandparents are being cared for in a facility. Medicaid is not a welfare giveaway program as characterized by the radical Republicans in this country. It is the cornerstone of our elder care system. 
So fast forward to the Tulevsky lawsuit. Mr. Tulevsky was sedated and eventually moved from his facility. Uh, Ms. Tulevsky was displeased with his care and felt his rights were violated. And she sued. And in the federal circuit court, the judges refused to hear the case. They, they immediately dismissed the case and said she had no standing and one was unable to sue the state. And this, my friends, is the crux of the matter. There has been a right-wing... It's one of those hidden agendas that, unfortunately, people don't talk to you about. But it is in the right-wing freakosphere's fears, deepest desires. It has to do with uh, Title 42, USC 1983. Um, It is the law that for the last more than half century has allowed people to sue state-run organizations that receive federal money for the violation of their civil rights. It is the watchdog statute. It's how it's done. It's what keeps these organizations in line. And Republicans have long hated this. It goes back to the, the one of my most hated justices on the Supreme Court, Antonin Scalia. I have despised Scalia for so many of his decisions. I really, really, really cannot come up with the right words at how diametrically differently Antonin Scalia and I look at the world. I believe in being my brother's keeper. I believe that if we are to be a good and decent nation, that we should... Focus on our people first. Supreme Court justices like Antonin Scalia believe just the opposite. They always believe in government first and the wealthy first. And that's what this boils down to, is an attack on our social safety nets and an attack on our federal government's ability to tax people of means to run our country. And let me explain to you how, what that means. And I'll start by, let me read to you part of the uh, 42 USC 1983. Every person who under color of any statute, ordinance, regulation, custom, or usage of any state or territory or the District of Columbia subjects or causes to be subjugated any citizen of the United States or other person within the jurisdiction thereof to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured by the Constitution and laws shall be liable to the party injured. And the rest is just blah, 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 breaks it down and it talks about uh, judicial immunity. Um, but that's the important part. If you understand, it is your right to sue and get redress for wrongs against your civil rights against the state in any program funded by the federal government. John Roberts issued an amicus brief in a case back filed here in the state of Texas, railing against USC 1983. Conservatives hate this. It's accountability. And they never want accountability. In fact, all but one of the Supreme Court justices 
uh, conservative can see, you know, you can't call them conservative because they're not really conservative anymore. Um, the radical right Supreme Court justices on the Supreme Court have all in one form or another, Alito, Gorsuch, um, Kavanaugh, just about everybody but Barrett, I believe, have come out against 1983. And what tells us what their response to it is going to be is what happened in the Tulevsky case. Wait a minute. In the Tulevsky case, as I said, it was dismissed by a circuit, uh, federal circuit court judge for standing. The wife, Ivanka Tulevsky, um, sued and uh, appealed. It went to the court, circuit court of appeals and was remanded back. And what that means, remanded back, means the Court of Appeals took a look at the decision by the circuit court and said, we don't agree with you. We believe that she has standing. Hold the trial. The Indiana Circuit Court judge said, no, to hell with you. and filed an appeal to the Supreme Court appealing the appeal. That, in and of itself, should not have been enough for the Supreme Court to take this up. This was not a decided case. This was not something that was in dispute. Like I said, for over half a century, this is how state-run organizations have been held accountable. It's how we keep organizations like state-run healthcare facilities from not doing their job, from abusing citizens, for violating your rights. But the U.S. Supreme Court took this case up. It's on what they call their shadow docket. And the fact that they took up this case and the only thing really in dispute is standing um, really goes to show you where they're going with this. They're going to strike years of precedence down. They are going to gut U.S. 1983. We know that's happening. We know it's coming. It's just a matter of time. What does that mean to us, to you? Where does that leave us? Well, let's talk about that, folks. If a person doesn't have standing, who does? The only person left with, the only or group or entity left with standing is going to be the federal government, which means that the federal government is going to have to create a massive, humongous bureaucracy to oversee that every block grant they give the states, every grant they give the states is being upheld within the law that the states are actually using that money the way it's intended. And that's going to lead to abuse. Because we know how the right wing, how radicalized they become and what they do in every instance. They always, always defer to the same thing. They take from the people and they give the wealthy. So in program after program after program, you think SNAPs, think, think just after school programs, think of any program funded, uh, science and research programs, any state, any program funded by the federal government in which they give money to the state 
and the state administers it through, whether it be through a university or whatever, that money is now up for grabs because who is going to enforce it and how? It means that the federal government is going to have to go back and sue constantly. The federal government is going to clog the courts trying to make these Republican states utilize money that was granted to them for good purposes, for necessary purposes like, like the care of our elderly. They're going to take that money and they're going to misappropriate it. They're going to take it away. And if you don't believe me, they already tried it here in the state of Texas. Dental care is part of Medicaid. The state of Texas decided it wasn't going to pay for dental care. They were sued. They lost. Now, dental care is included in Medicaid. Chief Justice Roberts wrote an amicus brief, and if you don't know what an amicus brief is, it just means friend of the court. It's an outside, uh, respected organization or person that gives its interpretation of a case before the court and, and expresses how they feel the court should view it. Excuse me. John Roberts filed an amicus brief in that case where he said, 1983, USC 1983, um, no one should have the right to sue under that. He's already expressed his opinion on this. Fortunately, the U.S. Supreme Court at the time was not the radical, right-wing, disgusting, broken, horrible institution that it is now. And they ruled against Texas. That's over. That will not happen anymore. Every right-wing Republican state will be able to abuse this funding and do with it what they will. And you know the things that they will do with it. The corruption on the right is unchecked right now. And they do have checks over them right now. They already abuse the system and must be held accountable over and over and over again and forced to do the right thing. They are taking that ability to force them away. What are they going to do then? It will mean lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit by the federal government and delay and delay and delay until it's just meaningless. Folks, this right wing point of view has to be stopped. This right wing, Republican, disgusting, rotten to the core, horrible thing, this monster, this radicalized monster must be stopped. When this happens, life as we know it, and it will happen, is going to change drastically. You're going to have to care for all of your elderly on your own. You are. These states are already going after elder care. In the state of Texas, they're doing the same thing. They're just making it, you know, this was Indiana, but it's every red state there is. They don't want to do anything that's considered an entitlement. And folks, they throw that word around like it's a bad word. It's like they're trying to make woke a bad word now. And woke just means aware, you know, it just... An entitlement. Let me explain that to you. An entitlement is, and I can best explain it with an example. 
You drive to McDonald's on your way to work. You go to the first, you go to the drive through and you're at the speaker and you order yourselves you know, a sausage biscuit and some coffee. At that point, it's nothing to you. At that point, they owe you nothing. They can tell you, hey, get out of here. We don't want you. We can't make it. Sorry, guys. But when you drive around to that first window and you pay for that sausage biscuit and that coffee, it's now an entitlement. It's something you own that you paid for that they are obligated to give to you. And until you reach that second window and they hand you your bag and cup of coffee, it's an entitlement. And that's all that word means. You know, they, they try to make it fancy, try to keep everybody bamboozled. But, you know, all you want is your cup of coffee that you paid for. And it's the same thing with Social Security, it's the same thing with Medicaid, it's the same thing with everything. Hmm. Oh, man, that's good. So, they hate entitlements. Why? Because they have to be paid for. And Republicans are all about stripping money out of the government, not caring for, their pe not caring for the people of America, and making sure that their wealthy patrons and donors can make as much money as possible. And they've been extremely successful at it. It started with the trickle-down uh, doctrine during the Reagan years. And you, and you see the, the wealth inequality growing and growing and growing. And I'm going to advocate for something here that a lot of people are just going to, whoa, what are you talking about? But, but hear me out, hear me out. Folks, not only do we need to right this situation. But we need to go back to the 90% tax bracket, upper tax bracket. When that tax bracket was, was put in place, I know you're thinking, oh, my God, are you kidding? 90%? I'm not going to pay 90% in taxes. No, you're not. No, you're not. That tax bracket is not for you. There are about 10 people in this country that would fall under that tax bracket. Ten. And it goes back to the whole idea behind income tax and the progressive income tax, which was that a man only needs so much. And beyond that, you can earn it, but you have a responsibility to society also. When the 90% tax bracket was, was implemented, there was one man in the country it applied to. One man, John D. Rockefeller. He was the only man wealthy enough to fall into the 90% tax bracket. And it stayed that way until about 50 years ago. When this whole greed is good baby boomer generation took over. And they fed us this bullshit idea that if we just make the wealthy rich enough, they'll just, they'll just create jobs for us. Well, they don't, because they only need so much. Even if it is lavish, the, the amount of money is so large, you cannot get a bearing on it in your mind. They can buy all the yachts they want. And there will still be such a mountain of money because our tax system is so broken, taken out of circulation, that we can't take care of each other. We utilize our infrastructure, our labor, our education system, everything to make them that money. They don't do it on their own. They like to claim they do, but they don't. And kudos to them for their good efforts, and I wish them well, and I want them to be wealthy. But there is a point in which they just start hoarding money. 
And the system's out of balance, and it needs to be rebalanced. And it needs to be rebalanced, or what I was talking about, where we're heading, is going to happen. And it will happen, folks. Your elderly, you will have to take care of at home. You will have to have a spouse or yourself. You will have to quit your job, quit your second job. You'll have, your spouse will have to quit their job. There will have to be somebody there to care for them. Elder abuse will skyrocket. And this is just one program we're talking about, folks. You know, you're, you're talking about the whole gamut of, of the entire system of the federal government granting states money to do the right thing, to do good things for America. It's a nightmare. You remember pictures, if you're old enough, they showed you in the Depression before the federal government figured out that we needed a social safety net. And you had things like soup kitchens, beggars, hobo camps. I mean, big ones, massive, not, not, just, not just the homeless that we have today, which is small in comparison. Even though the population is much, much larger, we don't have what we used to have before the social safety net existed. The extreme poverty, the extreme criminally run neighborhoods that were just entire sections of cities. That's what the social safety net lifted us out of. It did. I know you get right wingers today that think that, oh my God, we're in we're in horrible times, but they're they're idiots, people. They're idiots. They slept through history class. They have no idea and they don't care. They don't care about their fellow Americans. Republicans are the I got mine, screw you segment of our society. That's who they are. Folks, this is going to be bad. And if you don't think they're going to do it, look what they did with Roe. They promised us over and over and over again that Roe would not be overturned. They promised us that it would become a state's right issue. It was settled law. Now they tell us that they want it to be a federal law, state to state, uh, border to border, coast to coast. They want to impl implement these draconian laws that are causing horrific situations like mothers to have to carry dead fetuses around inside them. It's happening now. I mean, we've seen case after case, and it's only going to get worse. These are ignorant, arrogant people. Republicans are ignorant, arrogant people that are suffering from the Dunning-Kruger effect to the extreme. The Dunning-Kruger effect is being too stupid to know you're stupid. These Republicans in charge are too arrogant and stupid to know that they don't know enough to make decisions for doctors who professionally make these decisions, who are trained, who have spent years and years, decades of their lives learning how to deal with these situations. You get some freak Republican who gets donations from an, another freak group of uh, radical Christo-fascist can't use the word. And then they make, they write laws. They write laws. I mean, have you ever seen one of the pamphlets that these anti-abortion people put out? A six-month baby is about the size of my fingernail. 
It's about the size of my fingernail. But if you look at one of their pamphlets, my God, that, that it shows a woman that's nine months pregnant with a fully formed fetus inside her. They lie. And they know they lie. Because they're radical freaks. They just have one rabid agenda. And this is now applies to every single thing that is funded by a federal block grant. And what are the alternatives? Like we said, we either create a massive bureaucracy where there's just a huge number of of, of federal investigators looking into all these programs, standing over their shoulders all the time, every a highway project, you know, in, investigating every uh, um, elder care facility, facility, every hospital, every everything. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. The other option is the federal government stop funding states. Period. In which case, the right wing gets their frickin' hellscapes that they just, they dream of. All money goes to their, their, their donors. All money goes to their supporters, their, 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 the people that cut them checks. You know, they like to use rhetoric, well, we want to let you keep your money. No, they don't. No, they don't. They talk about, they're talking about going after Social Security. Let's talk about their agenda now. Let's, let, let's move on from this and talk about their agenda. You know, the head of the re-election campaign just said that he wants to, to uh, make Social Security come up for a vote every five years. They want to basically just kill Social Security. Now, if they kill Social Security, do you think they're going to stop taking the taxes in? No. Because they steal from Social Security now. Social Security is overfunded. It is supposed to be building up a reserve. And had they not raided it every year, it would be a self-sustaining organization. We wouldn't even have to pay taxes to support at this point if they had just left it alone. But every year they take that tax money that it goes above and beyond what funds Medicare and Social Security and they shove it into the federal government, put an IOU in Medicare and, and Social Security and use the money. If they're willing to play those kind of games, what are they going to do now that nobody's watching the money to the states. Let, let, let's talk about their agenda, folks. Let's talk about the Republican agenda. But before we do, a little commercial. Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee and a Good Woman. If you haven't tried Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee, for, all, for God's sakes, you have to give it a try. You can Google it on the internet, but make sure you find a valid source and you're getting Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee. Authentic Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee. It is not a brand. It is a crop grown in Jamaica. And it is, next to the radical Kopiluak, the best coffee I have ever had. Hmm. And the love of a good woman. Or as I like to call it, whoa, man. Because my wife keeps me in line. Okay, back to our program. Let's talk about the, move on to the Republican agenda. The legendary Dan Rather asked the question. He said, honest question. The Republicans want to win control of Congress in the midterm." What's their agenda? So I answered. And I answered it with what Republicans were telling us. I've got a list for you here. The first is the establishment of a Christian nationalist government. 
Every Republican out there, all of them have said the same thing. They are going to make our government a theocracy. They are going to make our government, and they try to use slick words like based on Judeo-Christian values, and they are talking about a Christian nationalist government. Some of them, like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert and the more big mouth of the right wingers, the stupider of the right wing, the less savvy, have come out and just said it. They want a Christian nationalist government. I hope that terrifies you because Marjorie Taylor Greene says people like my family, I was raised in a Catholic family. She said that uh, we're Satan worshipers. Of course, she also believes in Jewish space lasers. So I don't know what that means for the Jewish community in this Christian national state, nationalist state, but I guess we'll see if they ever get power. The second is they want a nationwide ban on abortion. They lied to us. They said it was a state's right issue, and they have changed their, their they've, they've completely, once Roe was overturned, have completely changed their talking points, and they are now saying we will have a nationwide ban on abortion. Mike Pence is going to run on that platform in 2024. This is something that we've heard from Marco Rubio. This is something that we, we've heard this from, from all, just, again, it's just all Republicans are saying they want a nationwide ban on abortion. They want to overturn Griswold v. Connecticut. That's another one I got to give you a little background. Most people don't know what Griswold is. It was a case decided... In, uh, about, I think it was 1963 or 65, uh, it is what allows you, as a married person, and we've just extended it without having to really fight for it to single people, but it was originally applied to married people, uh, the right to buy contraception. That's right, rubbers. Condoms. I mean, every, every form of diaphragms, uh, spermicide, <laughs> uh, the morning after pills, everything. It's all covered under Griswold. It's another privacy issue. That's what Roe was. It was a privacy case. It said the government had no business being in your business. That's what Roe said. It wasn't actually about abortion. It was decided on privacy. So was Griswold. Griswold was part of the foundation of the Roe case, the Roe decision. The government can't tell you what you can and cannot buy. They have to stay out of your bedroom. That's Griswold v. Connecticut. Marsha Blackburn and uh, Clarence Thomas, uh, Sam Alito. That, I mean, all the radical right have said that is wrong. The federal government, the you know, the small government people have said that the federal government needs to be able to tell you whether or not you can buy birth control. And they have just said it openly. The uh, next thing on their agenda is the demolition of voting. They're already doing it on the state basis. The state of Texas is very proud of the fact that we are the fastest growing by population state in the country. The reason being is that we're a relatively poor state. Um, real estate compared to other states in Texas, unless you're buying in Dallas or Frisco or uh, you know, the wealthier Houston suburbs or the wealthier San Antonio suburbs or, you know, you're talking beachfront property down on the coast, things like that. It's pretty cheap here. Even wealthy property compared to the rest of the country because we've got so, man, so much room um, is cheap. 
So people move here. It's cheaper to live. We have decimated the number of voting places in our, country, in our state here in Texas. That's what Republicans do. That's what Republicans do. They do not believe in democracy. They do not want you voting. What they care about is their own power. They do not care about democracy. They care about winning. And it's not a democracy if you can't lose. So even though we're the fastest growing state in the union, we have lost more polling places than any other state in the union. That's self-explanatory. They want to do that on a national level. They want to start curbing back all the voting rights that so many people have fought for. They want to go chipping around at the edges from the federal level until they can just leave it away. And the last thing, once they've decimated voting rights, is the installation of fascism. We came within a hair's breadth with Donald Trump. If Donald Trump had made it to the Capitol, if the Secret Service hadn't refused to take him to the Capitol, I shudder to think what would have happened on January 6th. Had they been able to delay that process and send the matter back to Congress or gotten their hands on the official slates of electors and destroyed them, they would have sent the matter back to Congress and it would have gone by a single state, by one state, one vote process. And at the time, there were more red states than blue, and they would have made Donald Trump president. They've already said they would have. They would have destroyed our democracy right then and there. Right then and there, we would have become a fascist government because when they bent that far, there was no bottom. They would go farther and farther and farther until Donald Trump would have been the fascist leader of our country. That's it. We were that close. Think about that. Because they didn't give up. They're fighting in states right now. They're rolling back in red states all over the country. They are fighting your ability to cast your vote. Here in the state of Texas, they're casting legal people off the voting rolls. They're doing it statewide. You have to check your voter registration to make sure they have not illegally removed you from the voter rolls so that you cannot cast your vote in this midterm. That's what Republicans do. It's terrifying. It is. There is only one path forward. If you love our country, if you believe that all of us, if you believe that no matter of what your race, what your color, who you love, that we were moving in the direction of real equality, of finally realizing the dream that our founders had. We were moving in the right direction. If you believe that, then you have to destroy the Republican Party. They have given you no other choice. They have laid their agenda in front of you and told you, we will do this. We Democrats have, have said, as Joe Biden said the other day in his wonderful speech in Philadelphia, 
we believe in democracy. Win or lose, we believe in democracy. We believe in our country. We believe in the country our founders intended. We believe that we should strive to become a more perfect union. We believe that we can deal with problems like becoming an elder country, a, a, a country there where we don't have enough young, hardworking people. We don't have the birth rates to support our Am I My Brother's Keeper agenda. Therefore, we believe in immigration. We were a country built on immigrants. We believe that we can continue on. We can bring people in that love America and want to have the American dream. Who will work and support us in our, our old age when we're too weak to fight for ourselves. Time is the fire in which we all burn in all of the United States and all of Europe are suffering from the same problem. Low birth rates. We need immigration. And that immigration is going to be Asian, African, Hispanic. Fortunately, if you're like me and, 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 and have had the wonderful upbringing I did growing up in South Texas, you know Hispanic people are wonderful human beings. It's a wonderful culture. It blends in so well with our American dream because they believe in hard work. They believe in family. God, they love their family. And they're fun, decent, just great people to be around. People I love dearly. Dearly, friends that I have had my entire life, family, are Hispanic, and they're wonderful people, and they'll save us. They will. They'll save us from our low birth rate if we can just get the racists out of the way. So, folks, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Help me. Help me destroy and end the Republican experiment. It has become too rotten, too perverse. We must end that party's influence completely to make room for a real opposition party to spring up. Let's end our wealth inequality. Let's stop looking at people so wealthy that you cannot fathom the amount of money that they own as a protected class. No, they need to fund the Am I My Brother's Keeper heart of what America is. We need national health care, and poor people cannot fund it. So let's get to work, folks. Check your registration. Get your documents in order. Help me. Hit the subscribe button. Buy a shirt. Buy a mug. I'm asking you. Help me fund my new Sunday news and commentary program. And next week, I think I may have a wonderful surprise for you. So join me again. I am... It's my intent to get this out at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning every week. I love you folks. Help me with this fight. I'll stand up. I'll lead the way. I'll suffer the slings and arrows, of the death threats, the, the curses, the attacks. If you're behind me. If you're behind me. Help me raise candidates up like Beto O'Rourke, like, like Val Demings, Tim Ryan, 
and so many other races across the country that you have done such an amazing job supporting. We have to support those state races, those, those congressional races. Those are so important. Local congressional races. You have to vote Democrat from the top of the ballot to the bottom. And you have to make next November 8th a strike. You have to. You have to. You have to spend your day at the polls. Do not go to work until you voted. Your nation's existence depends on it. Fight with me. I love you, folks. This is Old Texas Paul. I'll see you next Sunday. Have a wonderful day.